Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 1. In this video, we'll start to learn about the shapes molecules have. Many molecules have beautiful symmetric shapes, and we'll learn how to predict the shape from the molecule's formula. But not only are molecules interesting looking, we'll find out that their shapes are absolutely crucial for many of the chemical reactions that happen in your body and keep you alive. To start, let's remember what we know about Lewis dot structures. Here's the Lewis structure for water. You might remember that we can draw the two hydrogens on any two sides of the oxygen. Depending on which sides we choose, the hydrogens look like they're either at a 90 degree angle or on opposite sides of the molecule. Actually, neither of those is true. The Lewis dot structures don't usually look exactly like the actual molecules. For one thing, Lewis dot structures must be flat since we're drawing them on paper or on a computer screen. But in reality, plenty of molecules have interesting three-dimensional shapes, and it turns out we can tell what shape the molecule will be just by looking at the Lewis structure. Here's how. Remember, a chemical bond contains electrons, and we know that all electrons have a negative charge. That means the electrons in the bonds around the central atom in a molecule repel each other. So, the electrons get as far apart from each other as possible. So, for example, suppose we have a molecule with two bonds on the central atom, like carbon dioxide. The bonds here are both double bonds, but that doesn't change the fact that they'll get as far away from each other as they can. So, the two bonds in CO2 are on opposite sides of the carbon, because that's as far away from each other as they can get. Here's what that looks like. As you can tell, the angle between the bonds is 180 degrees and a molecule with this shape is said to be linear. What if we have a molecule with three bonds on the central atom, as in formaldehyde? Here's the Lewis structure of formaldehyde. Once again, the bonds get as far apart as possible, which means the angle between each of them is 120 degrees. You might think we'd call that shape triangular, but we're way fancier scientists than that, so we call it trigonal planar. Now let's look at methane, a molecule with four bonds. The Lewis structure looks like this will be a square molecule with a 90 degree angle between each pair of bonds, but that's not what we get at all. Instead, the shape we get looks like a pyramid with a triangular base. We say that the shape of this molecule is tetrahedral, and the reason we get this shape instead of a square is that the angle between the bonds in this molecule is 109.5 degrees, much larger than the 90 degrees we'd get in a square. In fact, 109.5 degrees is the largest angle between the bonds that we can get for four bonds, and that's why the molecule has this shape. So, now we know the shapes and angles for bonds with two, three, or four bonds on the central atom. Let's keep going. We don't usually draw Lewis structures for molecules with five or more bonds on the central atom, but they definitely exist. When we have five bonds, we get a molecule like phosphorus pentafluoride, which looks like this. This shape is called trigonal bipyramidal. If you look closely at the shape, you'll notice that two of the bonds are directly opposite each other, and the other three form a triangle around the middle. This kind of resembles a globe of the Earth. The two bonds opposite each other are like the north and south poles of the Earth's axis, and the three around the middle point along the Earth's equator. For that reason, these two bonds are called the axial bonds, and these are called equatorial bonds. This shape is also different from the others that we've seen so far, because there are actually two different angles between the bonds. The angle between the axial bonds and the equatorial ones is 90 degrees, but the angle between each of the equatorial bonds is 120 degrees. We'll look at one more shape now, the one where there are six bonds on the central atom, as in sulfur hexafluoride. This is called an octahedral shape, and as you can see, the angle between each of the adjacent bonds is just 90 degrees. If you've taken a geometry class, you'll recognize that this looks similar to the x, y, and z axes in the Cartesian coordinate system. The shapes we've looked at are all very different from each other. 
In fact, many molecules have very unique shapes. That's very important for many reactions that happen in the cells in your body. Those reactions involve proteins called enzymes. In most enzymes, there's an area on the surface where a second molecule, called the substrate, can bind. For example, the enzyme hexakinase performs a reaction with the sugar glucose. Most of the cells in your body, and in millions of other species from bacteria to trees to wombats, need to perform this reaction in order to live. And it only works because of the shapes of the enzyme and the glucose. The glucose has just the right shape to fit into this pocket on the enzyme called the active site. Other molecules with a slightly different shape won't fit into the active site. And that's important because your cells contain tens of thousands of different chemicals. And if all of them could fit into the active site, it would be rare for the enzyme and the glucose to actually find each other. That would prevent your cells from metabolizing glucose, and then your cells would die. So, we've learned about the shapes of molecules that have two, three, four, five, and six bonds on the central atom. There are also molecules with even more bonds, but those are much less common. But wait, when we began this video, I talked about water. But water doesn't have any of these shapes. Instead, water looks like this. It's kind of a V shape, and that's not one of the shapes we've mentioned so far. How do we explain that? The answer to that will come in the next video. And when we learn about that, we'll find out that there are lots of shapes that molecules can have, not just the five that we've already seen. These five are just the most simple shapes. So, we'll see even more interesting shapes next time, so I hope you'll join me for that video. Until then, have a good week!